the collision of two planes at Tenerife Airport. A vacation at the beach with scenic beauty is a dream for most people. But whether you are traveling by air, bus, or car, certain risks are always involved. Imagine that at one point, you see your vacation ready to begin, and at the next, you see your life flash before your eyes. Today, we are going to talk about the deadliest aviation accident in history, the collision that happened between two airplanes at Tenerife Airport, which shocked the world and changed the way air traffic control operates. So, let's get into it. The Tenerife disaster, which took place on March 27, 1977, is widely regarded as the world's worst aviation disaster, with a total of 583 fatalities. The events of that day have been retold from many perspectives, from the survivors and firefighters who were at the scene, to the investigators who uncovered the cause, to journalists and authors who sought to inform the world about what happened. Despite the different interpretations, each of these accounts highlight the tragedy of the disaster and the impact of human error. However, it's important to understand that the disaster was not just a matter of luck or coincidence. The circumstances leading up to the disaster were created by a series of human decisions that set the stage for what happened on that fateful day. The combination of poor communication, disregard for standard procedures, and unfavorable weather conditions all contributed to the disaster. March 27, 1977, Spain the Canary Islands. A bomb exploded at Gran Canaria Airport. Due to the explosion, air traffic has redirected and diverted to a Spanish neighboring island, Tenerife, at Los Rodeos Airport. Two Boeing 747s are among the flights to be diverted. Pan Am Flight 1736 was carrying 396 souls on board, and KLM Royal Dutch Airlines Flight 4805 carrying 248 souls on board. The captain of Pan Am's flight, Victor Grubbs, received an urgent message at around 12.30 regarding the explosion and was instructed to divert to Los Rodeos Airport on the nearby island of Tenerife. Tenerife Airport is located in the hills on the island and is not equipped to handle a large volume of air traffic and typically only serves a limited number of small aircraft. That day, Los Rodeos Airport in the Canary Islands was facing an unusual situation. With only one runway and two air traffic control personnel on duty, the airport was not equipped to handle the high volume of aircraft, let alone jumbo jets that were waiting to take off. The passengers on the KLM flight, unable to take off, were given permission to leave the aircraft and relax in the airport lounge. Meanwhile, around 2.15, Pan Am 1736 had just touched down and was waiting on the tarmac with the KLM aircraft. The final destination was only a brief 25-minute flight away to the nearby island, but due to the bomb threat, the Gran Canaria airport was temporarily shut down. With no one knowing how long they would be kept there, the passengers and working crew were in for a long wait. The weather at that time was pleasant and sunny, but it is well known that weather conditions can be unpredictable. However, a twist came when heavy fog began rolling down the mountains. The worst part was that there was no radar to monitor the airplanes due to a lack of facilities. Also, the center lights were out of service. In such severe weather conditions, air traffic control was unable to see the airplanes clearly. Finally, the good news arrived as the passengers were told that the Gran Canaria airport had been cleared. The passengers on board suspected that soon the airplane would depart and they would get to their final destination. However, that wasn't the case, and what was about to happen next could never have been predicted. The situation at the Los Rodeos airport was becoming increasingly complicated, with both the KLM and Pan Am airplanes waiting on the tarmac for takeoff. The KLM jumbo jet was in front of the Pan Am flight, refueling with 55,000 liters of jet fuel, which would take an additional 30 minutes. This forced the Pan Am flight to wait, and its pilots were growing eager to take off. Despite the KLM's refueling, there was still a delay. 
with no explanation from the Spanish authorities. The airplanes were kept on the tarmac for nearly two more hours, causing frustration from working crew and passengers. 4.56 p.m. KLM's most senior pilot, Captain Jacob Banz Anton, requested permission to taxi. Two minutes later, air traffic control gave the green light, and the KLM jumbo jet began to taxi. As the pressure to take off increased, air traffic controllers made a crucial mistake by instructing the pilot of the Pan Am 1736 to turn onto taxiway three instead of the more logistically suitable taxiway four. With visibility reducing rapidly due to the foggy weather conditions, Captain Grubbs was struggling to locate the correct taxiway due to poor visibility. Meanwhile, KLM 4805 was maneuvering towards takeoff with its captain, Van Zanten, at the controls. Despite being aware of the presence of the Pan Am jumbo jet, Van Zanten had no visual contact and was eager to take off. When he received a standby instruction from air traffic control, Van Zanten either misheard or ignored the instruction and proceeded with takeoff. However, the KLM jumbo jet was completely unaware that Pan Am 1736 was still taxiing down the main runway searching for its assigned taxiway. The tragedy that unfolded on that fateful day was captured by the cockpit voice recorder. It revealed in the frantic moments leading up to the collision, Pan Am's first officer, Robert Bragg, spotted the KLM jumbo jet's landing lights through the thick fog and shouting a warning to Captain Grubbs. Despite Grubbs' immediate attempts to steer the airplane off the runway, tragically, it was too late. 5.06. The KLM aircraft was traveling at full speed on the runway and beginning to lift off, before tragically impacting the Pan Am airliner just behind the aircraft's right wing. Fueled by its forward momentum, the Dutch airplane briefly reached a height of 100 feet before crashing back down to the runway and exploding into a raging fireball. The impact of the collision also resulted in the Pan Am 1736 airplane exploding into flames and breaking apart. Those who survived the tragic disaster were mostly seated in the front of the Pan Am airplane. Unfortunately, all 248 passengers on board KLM Flight 4805 lost their lives in the tragedy. On board Pan Am Flight 1736, 335 people perished. Only 61 people managed to survive the fatal accident on the tarmac and flee from the burning airplane loaded with jet fuel. The Tenerife disaster remains the deadliest accident in all of aviation history. 583 fatalities. Words cannot describe the horror that would take the lives of hundreds within just a few seconds. News spreads quickly around the globe as many try to understand how two state-of-the-art jumbo jets could possibly be on the runway at the same time. Events like these are traumatic and sometimes they are uncontrollable. Many factors contributed to this tragedy, including miscommunication between the air traffic controllers, the KLM captain's decision to ignore standard procedures, and poor weather conditions. Despite all the variables, this tragic incident highlights the necessity for pilots and air traffic controllers to follow standard operating procedures in order to make sure that safety is always the utmost priority.